disease is potentiated by the CO2 nanowire delivery of cellulite. Thank you. This is a great honor for me to present some of our ongoing research on cellulizing since 2004. And I am very pleased by previous two speakers who already emphasized the importance of blood wound barrier and infiltration of blood material into the brain. How brain can be devastated is very well described. So my work is very simple now. This is a multi-institutional work and we have support from Department of uh, Defense, European Office of Aerospace Research and Development, US Air Force Research Laboratory, Swedish Government, Swedish Strategic Foundations, and I am from Uppsala University. We have all other collaborations. I have to say that what I am speaking today in front of you is my personal view. It has nothing to do with any organization that I am working with. So the point is that we are investigating effect of nanomedicine that is not quite recent, it is now started in 2001 and doing experiments in some aspects of Alzheimer's disease. The importance of nanomedicine is quite clear now and we have to consider the drug delivery that is also in the research area for the last 10 or 15 years. The point is that which type of nanoparticles, the carriers can influence the drug delivery or the neuroprotection, these are the questions. And I am very happy that blood brain barrier is extensively mentioned. Ripoport is considered to be one of the founding fathers of blood brain barrier from NIH. And I am one of the privileged persons because my Indian thesis was examined by Rappaport. This thesis was done in 1982, that is my Indian supervisor. And we should care about endothelial cells because they are the largest in number individually, much more than neurons and even in glial cells. When I say glia here, it also includes astrocytes and microglia. So we presented our hypothesis that we have drugs that can modulate the function of blood brain barrier and still we believe that restoration of blood brain barrier by any means will reduce the brain damage. And I am very privileged that the foreword was written by Professor Milton Brightman, who was one of the inventors of anatomical sites of the blood brain barrier. So that was his first picture showing that the endothelial cells are connected with tight junctions and this length in a 12 minus strong in molecular diameter do not pass. So this is the importance of the blood brain barrier, but now we know that tight junctions are even present in, in the liver and also non-neural cells. Well, so it, it means that the cellular membrane <laughs> appears to be regulating the barrier even tighter than the tight junctions alone. I am basically a neuropathologist and trained under Professor Ingve Olsen. He was one of the leading neuropathologists at that time. And then took some uh, training on electron microscopy with Servus Navarro in Berlin and Humboldt Fellow. We believe, as mentioned earlier, that the blood brain barrier could be the key elements of neural protection and disease formation. And I'm also happy to see that edema was mentioned several times because in some of the cases edema is just forgotten. So this could be one of the uh, possibilities having the cell death. We have to protect the uh, neural protection here either this level or even better at this level. Why nanomedicine and Alzheimer's disease? This is just an example in our hand that whether nanomedicine can protect also Alzheimer's disease apart from uh, traumatic brain injury, stroke and other things. This is the recent report in 2007 and you can see that there are more than 5 million Americans are affected with Alzheimer's disease and the number is going worldwide. I'm just quoting because this is the American report. It doesn't mean that it happens only in America. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just history. And as a pathologist, I would like to show this picture because what happens in Alzheimer's disease as compared to the normal. And these are senile plates, it's old story. And you can see that amyloid beta peptide. The point is that the blood brain barrier, when it is broken down in, in human cases, 
we do not forget that amyloid beta peptide is present in plasma as well. So why not this can lead to the brain and producing damage? Apart from that, the efflux of the amyloid beta peptide is also affected in the disease. So this is two-way sort. And I just show here the importance of uh, tau protein and other involved in this case. So here is just an example because I will talk about that. I show this cartoon only to show you that endothelial cells can't be ignored in any kind of disease. Previously people are talking about uh, glial cells and neurons. I just summarized few literatures telling the importance of blood-brain barrier in Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Ajesh Kalaria in London, he did lots of uh, neuropathological investigations in human cases and showed that the microvessels are quite damaged, you can see these case reports. Also the enzymes found in the endothelial cells are altered in Alzheimer's disease. These are the examples that pathological changes can be seen in microvessels. And then the neurotrophic factors came to treat Alzheimer's disease apart from amyloid beta peptide and antibodies. After that, quite lately, in 2011, people are talking about nanomedicine and Alzheimer's disease. The point is that oxidative stress plays a very important role in any kind of disease and Alzheimer's disease is not an exception. Our colleague Mark Smith was one of the pioneers in telling that oxidative stress is quite important in Alzheimer's disease, we should not forget it. In 2005, I met Professor Dafin Murasan and he introduced us this compound, cerebrolysin, because in human brain or any cases, no single chemical compound or factor is responsible for all the pathological changes. So it should be a multimodal drug that should be tried. And I was very interested by the arguments of Professor Murasanu. So we did some experiments. To just make the theory working, we did some experimental uh, animal models and we found that this compound is really protecting in some of the aspects that we had used. When we have used knockout mice model, this is our first uh, experiment that shows leakage of albumin and cerebralizing, normal cerebralizing was able to protect. So it means that leakage of albumin or breakdown of the blood barrier could play key roles in Alzheimer's disease as well. Then the point comes to drug delivery. This is Dr. Young, he discovered nanowires for electronic use. These uh, titanium dioxide nanowires look like this and they can hold drug if labeled properly. This is Dr. Ryan Tiang and Dr. Wang. They have the US patent of titanium nanowires and they have the technology to label any kind of drugs. We are working with different kinds of drugs with different types of drug delivery. Even nowadays, stem cells are also uh, labeled with nanowires and they can work better than the normal. So the point is that nanowire delivery of drugs can potentiate its effect but I caution here that no bad drug can be made good by just application of nanowires. These are very costly experiments and the former democrat governor has had uh, a big role in fin financing and supporting our observations from our trans. When we did nanowire technology and cerebralizing we were also shaky as some of you people are here that thinking what I am doing and what is going on. So just to test our own skills and hypothesis, we submitted this as an innovation to <laughs> National Innovation Summit in United States happening every year in summer. And in this, we are surprised that to my wife it was found top 15% of all technological advances submitted to uh, National Innovation Summit. So we are encouraged that perhaps these people who have judged and evaluated our research, uh, there is no any kind of bias inside and probably we are doing right. Then in 2013, we have also submitted nanowire delivery of cerebralizing for the treatment of neuropathic pain and that it got top 20% technological advances and there were some news about that. Recently in 2017, 
they formed the committee of National Innovation Summit that includes all my agents that this is worthy of another 18% top technological award. This was 2000. So then we are encouraged and continuing our experiments in this case. This is the example that amyloid beta peptide, this is six sections. And you can see that nanowire delivery of cerebrolysin has reduced the ABP in Alzheimer's model. We tested in another way, and amyloid beta was measured here, uh, and you can see that nanowire cerebrolysin has the most beneficial effect in reducing the level. The same thing ha happening with tau, and you can see that nanowire cerebrolysin is the most effective. So that means that something is happening when we have given nanowire cerebrolysin as compared to cerebrolysin alone. And this is our model. It's not our model. It's a well-established model for uh, animal model. Then we, since we are pathologists, so we went for structural changes to see. And as you can see here, that this is the amyloid beta peptide uh, deposit around the microvessels. And nanowire cerebrolysin has the best effect. And also leakage of albumin was most prevented by nanowire cerebrolysis. Also the activation of astrocytes, because astrocytes have some role in regulating the blood-brain barrier. We can see that nanowire cerebrolysin is the best in reducing the activation of astrocytes. Likewise, the neuronal cell damage. Then we went to electron microscopy. And here you can see that myelin was best protected when we had given nanowire cerebrolysin as compared to the cerebrolysin alone as this is the undetected group. The question that we are addressing nowadays is no single disease can affect humans in the pathological state. So there are multiple kinds of disease and all pharmacological experiments are done drug testing on healthy animals. So the point is that if we have already a disease our pathophysiological changes can be expected much higher or much different so that our drug treatment also must be different. So I'm just showing few examples to you in diabetic model. And here you can see that these are diabetic. All changes were exacerbated and nanowire cerebrolysin has prevented the albumin leakage and also this uh, astrocytic activation and neuronal cell production. The antibodies therapy, I'm showing a part of this was a talk, invited talk by uh, ninth clinical trials in Alzheimer's disease last year and this year also we are going to the same and there are some editorials people like to see from our work. So tau you all know that not only in Alzheimer's disease it also affects uh, traumatic brain injury pathophysiology. So these are some evidences that why we should work on tau. These are some literatures I summarized. Then there are also some other enzymes related with tau. So what we did, we infused tau antibodies and also measured together with cerebrolysis. And here you can see that amyloid beta peptide infusion. This is the level of uh, tau and CSF level, cerebral cortex, hippocampus and cerebellum. Here we, I'm showing results of PLGA level cerebralizing just to take the hypothesis that if we change the mode of drug delivery, whether we can see some differences. But also PLGA level cerebralizing did the best in reducing these values. The same thing happened also in this case. You can see this uh, different levels, and you can see here that PLG level cerebralizing and titanium dioxide nanowire level cerebralizing, although the changes may not be significant, but it appears that. Uh, nanowire delivery of cerebralizing appears to be better. These are the example of uh, brain damage and this is the uh, tau antibodies with nanowire cerebralizing. The neurons were better protected. This is another example here. You can see that this is uh, antibody alone and then we have this combination of uh, uh, cerebralizing. Both were delivered nanowire. They are protecting much better. So the point is that we can enhance the effect of a good working drug by adding another good working drug, probably with enhancement by drug delivery, in our case, by titanium nanowire or PLGA. I will show you briefly some examples that is quite common in military cases. You know that 
Military personnel are highly vulnerable to Alzheimer's disease, whether they have traumatic brain injury or not. And this is, and also, the suicidal events due to depression is quite common in any military of the world, but the women are more vulnerable than, than men. So, these depressive state also increases the blood-brain barrier, and here is the specific changes in the cerebellum, uh, uh, sorry, hippocampus CA4 area, and some cortex. The idea of working neuropathological advances, as you all know, that you can detect the cell changes in a specific layer and a specific anatomical areas. But if you work only on biochemical measurements, this is the homogeneity of whole brain, you can't say that where and how these enzymes are increased. So as you can see that only few cells were done here. And then here you can see that when we have given amyloid beta peptide infusion, this is untreated, much more changes here, but nanoacerbolizing and PLGA both help in reducing the changes. This is another example, depressive state has enhanced the activation of GFAP and nanoacerbolizing appears much better as compared to PLGA, although both were quite good. The same thing is happening here also, the amyloid beta peptide diffusion and albumin. This is PLGA. And this is the example you can see here that PLGA level cerebralizing is reducing all the factors like uh, blood and barrier leakage, edema formation, distortion of nerve cells, and also astrocytes. And so we can say that uh, depressive state has exacerbated the pathological changes and nano delivery of cerebralizing has reduced those things. Briefly, I will go for head injury as well, just to show you some examples. This is the model of concussive head injury. We have applied before, and you can see that this works like um, uh, counter coup mechanisms. The uninjured half is much more damaged. And here is the case that when we have used amyloid beta peptide infusion in traumatic brain injury, all values were, were exacerbated. Cerebralizing alone, medium primary stem cells alone, but the combination of them has the best effect. These are some examples here. Nanowires, cerebralizing, and medium primal stem cells have the best effect when it is a combination of amyloid beta peptide infusion with traumatic head injury. That is quite common in military. Neprilizing, that the award we got. And we have also tried to level uh, nano delivery of neprilizing. This is an example that it is quite showing with amyloid beta peptide, but not with GFAP. And here, you should concentrate only on, on this column, that when we have combined nanowire cerebralizing with nanowire uh, nebulizin, all the values regarding blood brain barrier leakage, brain edema formation, and neuron changes are significantly reduced. And this is the example in hippocampal cells. You can see that uh, cerebralizing and nebulizin has best protected the hippocampal cells. Now we are also working with Dr. Croto. He has some peptides and we would like to deliver with nano wire delivery together with cerebralizing. And I can say for this part that this is important. I'll show this PLGA level effect and I'll show you only one example that also PLGA level cerebralizing can maintain very high titers in the plasma for longer period. And here you can see the leakage of blood brain barrier in both the conditions. Both were quite effective, but it appears that nano wire delivery of cerebralizing appears to be a little bit better than PLGA. Clinical conditions, we know that why we fail sometimes. And we are working together with Dr. Shelley because he was the inventor of some CRF fragments and he would like to see what will happen if we combine CRF fragments with cerebralizing in many other models. This is uh, Dr. Rasia who uh, produces this um, nanowire delivery of cerebralizing. And of course, uh, our previous former Prime Minister has supported greatly to our work here. And now we are working on titanate uh, nanospheres. Here cerebralizin will be injected or any drug can be injected and it can slow release inside the body. And the often point is that why nanowired or nano delivery of drug can have superior neuroprotective effects as compared to the normal drug? The question is, I don't know. <laughs> and we still need to work. But a hypothesis could be based on the literature that when nanowire delivery of drugs is given, it pierces the cell intracellularly or intercellularly without damaging that. We have evidences for that. And then it can release its compound material slowly 
in the extracellular or even intracellular environment. Of course, the nanowires stay for some time. Therefore, the point is that we must choose innocuous uh, material that has at least effect for a long time. In our US counterparts, they say that even six to three years, six months to three years, if they implant nanowires in the knee surgery, it does not produce any damage in human cases. We are also in contact with, uh, to see that our hypothesis is working and getting influence in science. This is Yoda uh, Yonath, and she is expert on antibiotics. Nowadays, antibiotic resistance is quite important in the medicinal history. So we would like to work nano delivery of uh, antibiotics. Maybe it can help something. And to prove of this, that we were just invited uh, in European Shock Society meeting in Paris, where we have this neurosepsis, the new term is coined here, and I was one of the chair, and we delivered a nano delivery of cerebralizing to reduce some aspects of uh, neurosepsis in cases of heat stroke and traumatic brain injury. This, we have had, had, uh, highlighted some of our activities for neural protection. This appears in June, and this book will appear uh, in November. This is the International Review of Neurobiology, and Stride is central nervous system, uh, nanomedicine in central nervous system injury and repair. The effect of nanowire delivery has reached to many other countries as well. And Chinese army is not alone. So they would like to work on their Chinese medicine. There is one traditional Chinese medicine university. This is one of the largest in China and probably in the world. So they would like to do something with us and even they have given me a consultant and appointment to, to help their Chinese traditional medicine using nanowire delivery. This paper we have just published with uh, the Chinese medicine in molecular neurobiology this year. And we are very privileged. And I can see that our team could be proud that this year again in Society for Neuroscience Nanowire delivery of cerebralizing has come as a hot topic, and if you will go, you will see in press release two papers. This is one paper on Parkinson by Dr. Asia, and this is on Alzheimer. So we are very happy that probably we are not doing anything wrong, and probably we are in somehow right direction. And we need to do more work and understand its mechanism. And we believe that urban barrier damage is key for all kinds of illness. We are working on many other factors. Comorbidity factors was introduced by Professor Murasanu, and I'm very deeply grateful to him. We have support from various organizations to mention here. Different organizations support our funding, our collaborators. I am from Uppsala University. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Professor Sharma, for presenting this very interesting new approach to the treatment of various diseases, especially Alzheimer's disease. This is now open for one short question to Dr. Professor Sharma. If there's no question, thank you very much. Then we start the general discussion. <coughs>